configured uh, like late game i'll show you like the most standard way of playing arena with all of the civilization the, if you see someone play arena at a high level this is what they are doing in the opening it remains basically the same you usually want to get like a little bit more space uh on your map so i'm already going to delete the walls on the left side i'm not i'm i'm gonna make sure i don't delete the walls which connect to the outside i just want to have like enough space for my opening base scout for my resources six on food not adding fishing ships doesn't show our opponent we are landing I are I I made three fishing ships. How does that show you that? No. I don't think that's a issue. That's like the wrong thing to be asking, my friend. Or maybe I don't understand your question. Once you've scouted all your sheeps, start pushing your deers. And again, four onward in the opening. Six on food. Four onward, six on food. Next villager goes to take the boar. And now, next villager makes two houses before going for the mill. Six under the TC still. I'm gonna go out, look for stuff over here. TF. Is this 40C booming on Arena a clown strategy? It's not really a clown strategy at a 1v1, but if you wanna play a team game, 40C boom is like more than okay. You can add a 4th TC eventually on Arena, but you don't open with a 4th TC. You always open 3 TC on Arena 1v1. Like, you rarely go for a 4 TC boom. All the new villages stay under the town center till my deals are finished. After I make the two houses, I go for the mill. I'm gonna bring in my second boar already and redistribute the villages to the berries so that it doesn't get overcrowded under my town center. Four on food, four on berries. After you have four on berries, like basically around 20 population, this villager goes to make a second lumber camp. 10 on the food under the town center. New villagers go to wood till I have 10 on wood. Then I add like one more house. Well, this farm is fine. I actually was not planning to make it right now, but 
I fucked up with my heart key. Yeah, I'm gonna add farms once my boar is finished. So it's like around the right time. Need a fourth one. And we're gonna go up at 27 plus 2 population. Five on each wood line. The last two villages go to gold. Four farms. I'll actually make the mining camp on this side. Add two more villages while going up because you you skip loom because this is arena. You don't get loom. But this is like the build you usually see on the highest level. 27 plus 2 if you have a no eco bonus civilization if i'm doing like you can go up like one or two population faster than this depending on which civilization you are something like um let's say franks lithuanians even magyars in some cases you can go up with 25 plus 2 and get like the same build order because of the eco bonuses magyars for cheapest cards even hans you can do 26 plus 2 Once you're down to the last sheep, I'm gonna add like one more farm so that I have a total of five. The next village is go toward. Usually I do eight onward and then distribute more toward after clicking castle. Like you don't have to. The one of the biggest reasons like is like if you have ten onward, you just forget about it. Like you don't have to do re redistribution later in the game. Like I find this much easier way of doing it. Once you're up, make your stable, make your blacksmith. Two villagers make the stable, one villager makes the blacksmith. The new villagers stay under the town center. And you should be able to click up. The last villager goes to gold so that you have a three on gold. I feel it's more easier to do with Korea because your wills have more line. What? Not sure what that means, Misty, but maybe there's a joke in it which I could not understand. Wood upgrade, farm upgrade, while you're going up. Yeah, I can't, I, I don't get your humor. Forgive me. Once your um, horse collar is finished, make 10 farms. At least 10 farms. I have a total of 8, 9, and that's 10. Once you have your 10 farms, start making scouts. Every 80 food, you, you'll start adding scouts. And add house. Gonna add like three scouts and get the light cav upgrade. Okay, these villages are fucked. AI is bugging out. Look for all the relics on the map and protect them with your scout. Once you're up, get light cab immediately. Add a villager, add a TC immediately as well. And with the new villages, you just keep uh, add a monastery as well. Yeah, one of the bigger ones. I almost forgot a monastery. Okay. 
also want the world upgrade as soon as I'm able to afford that. That is. I have enough for a word upgrade as well. So I have like four light cav, add more, skip. So one trick after this, once you are in this area, like you have your second TC going up, you have your monastery going up, you have like four light caps on the field. You can add spearmen, you can add more scouts instead of getting the uh, word upgrade. But my recommendation, just so that you are in a much easier point of the game where you are booming more than you are relying on fighting for the relics, the more you fight for relics, the easier it is at a higher level, but at a lower level, it's much better to have a safer economy. So my recommendation is always get the wood upgrade as soon as you can. Make the monks to pick up the relics immediately, use the light cap to guard them. And now I want at least 15-ish farms before I think about a third town center. Make more villages and only keep making villages. Add like light cap if you think you're under pressure, like and he's adding light cap. Only add light cap when your opponent is adding light cap. Otherwise, you don't need to add more. Keep adding monks though. Protect the monks with the light cap, pick off his monks with your light cap and again i'm just going for my 15 food 15 on food uh, 15 farms in this case and all the new villages basically just go to wood from this point on gonna have a dedicated house builder i have a yeah i have a tendency to get getting housed really often in this game so that's one of my biggest weaknesses And once I have enough wood for a fourth town, third town center, I'm gonna add it. So 15 on food before I add the 30 C is usually the count I remember. All the new villages go to wood, and once you're able to afford wheelbarrow, get wheel. And then we are going to be text, uh, basically going for uh, like imperial age uh, really like you're not you don't want to invest more like into castle age other than like contesting for the relics i'm gonna be spending basically all my fo food and farms and in this game i'm gonna go for arbalist and let's say bombard cannons or uh, like arbalest trebuchets so i want at least 30 farms before i think about clicking up then all the new villagers keep going to uh, food till i have 30 farms i have 27 i need three more already have like this TC passively going to gold so that I can mine gold even this one can go to gold now how many do I have I have 30 farms exactly and as soon as I have my 30 farms I'm gonna send like six seven villages on stone uh, with Koreans you need like seven that should be enough but with other civilizations you need like more like nine villages on stone because of Koreans getting that free uh, wood uh, wood boost on the Rico. Uh, stone boost, I mean stone collection boost. So I have two TC going to gold now, and I'm gonna get the gold upgrade. In a realistic game, like you will not get five relics unless your opponent is totally giving them to you. So I'm gonna delete these two monks, and let's say I have at least three relics that I secured. In an even game. Gonna get the gold upgrade as soon as I'm able to afford it. When do you consider heavy plow? Very interesting, but also safe and boring. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty much like the more current meta style. I'm not trying the aggressive method just yet. When do I uh, get uh, horse collar? Is heavy plow? I mean, 
Uh, yeah, after clicking up, not before that. Especially if you're going for a archer-based army. If you're playing like something like Paladin, then get it while you're booming. I would have gotten it around 24, 24-ish on food timing. Uh, I've, I almost forgot the second building, which is really important of clicking up. And I'm also skipping handcart because, uh, again, it's all about the timing on arena. If you delay your Imperial, you're only putting yourself further behind. Right now, I'm like at least 30 seconds behind than what I should be. And I click up. Once I'm up, now is the time of finalizing my economy upgrade. I can send both the town centers on uh, wood now. I'm gonna get the heavy plow while making my artillery ranges. Heavy plow, the second gold upgrade. Make a market if you wanna balance, but I'm showing you like the raw balance that I'm doing in this game. The more high on gold because I got like relics almost immediately. But that's fine again. Like, it's better to float gold than food and wood. Uh, food, uh, food and wood. <laughs> Get the upgrades for your crossbows slash arbalas. Let your farms run out if they are running out at this point of the game. You don't want to be replacing them. You want to let them go out. Add a castle, keep making crossbows, get mod canaro, getting ballistics as well. Once I have the second gold upgrade and the farm upgrade, most of my uh, food and gold techs are complete. But I did not have 25 farms while, go uh, I mean 30 farms while going up. I have like a little bit less than that. That's why I'm gonna struggle a little bit. But again, if you have 30 farms while going up to the Imperial League, you will have enough resources for your upgrades. Even though I don't have all of it just yet. But once you're up, make a trip immediately and use the arbalist to protect them. You need a siege workshop as well so that you can make bombard cannons. Bombard cannons are good for sniping your opponent's siege, which they usually make to kill your arbalist. Getting chemistry as well. Actually, I'll delay my arbalist to get chemistry first. Chemistry allows me to get bombard cannons a little bit quicker. Keep making crossbows slash arbalas. And continue making trebs. I want at least three trebs before I stop making trebs and go for like something like uh, uh, conscription. I can add more on st uh, stone now. And now I can start replacing my farms again. Getting thumb ring as soon as I can. Once conscription is completed, I should have enough. Just ma max out on my arbalistic. At this point, I can get hand cut as well. I should have gotten hand cut while I was going up, actually. That's the timing to get it. So a lot of things that I'm even I'm forgetting because I've not done this build in a while. The more optimized version of this like looks a little bit like cleaner, but it's still the same, in my opinion. 
and you add more castles forward once you like kill your opponent stuff you start adding halberdiers if you want to play against like cavalry let's say my opponent is already making cavalry so like once you have your initial like arbalist mass like this and you continue booming uh you start adding infantry to your army composition as well which allows you to deal with well whatever your opponent is throwing at you mostly focus on making bombard cannons to snipe your opponent's stuff before they get to a critical mass of dealing versus you You can start even mixing war wagon at this point, but this is like your generic build for most of like arbalist civilizations. You open with light cow and then switch to arbs, and open with like trebs and arbs and like all of that stuff. Forgot to get the word upgrade, but like you're just basically finalizing your upgrades at this point. Uh, you can switch to onagers. You can go for uh, your own stuff. This is like your Korean death ball, though. This is like you open scouts and then you, you win the game from this this point 